In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about the making of these center caps. These are out of plastic and I'm trying to copy them out of aluminum here. This is sort of the first crack, Op 1, and I don't know how well it's focused here, but the 3D surfaces, these sur this surface here and this surface, didn't come out the greatest, so I got a new finishing end mill and we will try to hit it with this finishing end mill instead of this it's a four flute coated end mill not exactly ideal for aluminum and it was a little bit worn out so i think that's why i'm seeing this but anyway the main reason for this video will be to talk a little bit about the workflow i use with the new drewtronics probe here i'm not yet using uh, cam software to drive the probe i'm just using it in my control here to pick off my zeros and we're going to try to make two at the same time. So the first thing to do will be to jump into cam here to uh, sort of tell the program that we want to make two duplicate pieces. I'm using the um, HSM Works plugin for SolidWorks. So my first job is going to be I'm cutting in these flats here on the other side of my stock just so I can hold it in my vise the way I'm holding them right now is a little sketchy but they won't budge I'm taking lighter cuts so that's all right so we're gonna just kind of take these corners out of the stock so we can flip it around and hold it in the vise better way to do it would be to hold it in a chuck but I've got two vices set up and I don't have uh, two chucks so we'll do this so I make this my default folder and then in the job, the first thing to do, or really the only thing to do, is down here in this uh, in this post processing section of uh, the edit job window here. Um, my work offset is going to be, we're actually gonna choose one for this work offset. Um, the way my control works is 0 and 1 are both G54, and then 2 is G55, 3 is G56, and so on. So we're going to start it at 1. We're going to specify that we want multiple work coordinate offsets. Um, it's going to want to know work duplicates, so it specifies the number of workpiece duplicates. We want to make 2. And this is the number by which to increment the, um, the work coordinate system. So the first one is going to be number one, which is going to be G54. And then the second one, it's going to increment by one, and it's going to end up at G55. And then down here, uh, I don't like to preserve order. The, the reason I do two at a time is trying to, trying to eliminate tool changes. I don't have a tool changer, so we're going to uh, order by tool. And so we're going to do everything with one tool, and then sort of jump back and forth, um, minimizing the number of tool changes. So now jumping into the control, we can see here we've got, um, we're in G54. We're going to want to tell the control, we're going to zero out our G54 on the first piece, and then we're going to go ahead to G55, and we're going to tell, now we're in G55, we're going to zero these coordinates out for the second work piece. So let's uh, go over to the, I'll go back to G54, we'll start there. And let's go over to the machine here and I'll show you how I use the probe. So the version of the Drewtronics probe that I got is this sort of TTS tool holder style, but it is not with the Tormach connector. It's just with a two pin connector. Uh, so there's two leads that come out of this guy. And um, this probe is normally closed and it's a little nuance, which I really like. Um, the centroid uh, probes are normally open and I really like that it's normally closed because if I forget to plug the probe in, the control senses, uh, well, that it's an open input and it won't let me move around until the probe is plugged in, which sort of prevents a, uh, a crash. There's a probe detect option that you can wire into the CNC control, which detects its presence, but uh, this one just has two leads coming out of it. So having it normally closed really, well, just sort of helps prevent any unintended crashes. When I put the probe into the spindle, I make sure I put it in the same way. I've sort of scribed a little nick into the spindle here, and I always line the LED up with that little, um, with that little nick, just to gain a little bit more consistency. Now we go ahead and put in the connector, just like that.
I'm going to jog the probe down. And I like to sort of put it right beside the boss. On this side here. And in the, uh, in the centroid acorn control, you are able to sort of set the probe up on any side of the boss. And now in the control here, I go to set up. I want to set up my part. And then I go over to probing. And I want to probe this boss. So I probe the boss here. You see the little, the stylus is on the left side of the boss, just like we have it set up. You can change that in the control. Like I mentioned, you can start on the bottom, the right side, top side. We're going to start on the left. You're going to want to enter the approximate probe uh, boss diameter. I like to overshoot it. So my stock is, um, it's uh, four inch. So I like to overshoot it. I'll say four and a half. And the clearance amount, this is the Z clearance. So how much you want the probe to lift over. Half an inch will be enough for us here. I'm going to go back over to the machine here. We're going to hit cycle start. And before it lets me start, I got a little warning on my, on the uh, on the control saying verify the uh, probe is functioning properly. So what I'll do is I'll come in here with my finger, I'll trip it. I see both the LED turning on, and in the control you can see the probe tripped message. So it's just a little warning to uh, one additional fail safe to make sure you don't crash the probe. And here we go. We'll start the probing cycle on uh, G54. So in the control. We're making sure we're in G54. This piece on the left will be our G54, and on the right we'll make a G55. So here we go. And I've sped this up for us. It's uh, moving at five and 10 inches a minute in real time, so it's a little bit slow. And you'll also notice that the probe goes down to Z a little early on both the X and Y axes. These are little kinks I'm sort of still working to, uh, to work out. All right, so with, the, uh, with this probing routine on the centroid control, uh, it tells us, okay, the center of boss is 0.1059, Y minus 0.4842, and the diameter of the boss is 3.9979. So that seems to check out, and the nice thing is that it kind of, uh, the probe returns to these positions. So if we see here, X 0.1059, Y minus 0.4842, that makes it real easy to uh, zero out. So we go here, we're right now, we're on X, we set that to zero, we go next axis, we're on Y, we set that to zero, and now we've got to probe our Z. So we go next axis, we want to know um, where the Z is. My tool, or the, my probe number I've got as tool number 40, so we'll put that in, and then we just hit uh, auto, we'll hit that we want, you know, cycle start to move probe to surface. I'm going to hit cycle start once. It'll tell me to verify if the probe is functioning properly. So let's go over and just kind of touch it. I think at some point I may start trusting it. I don't know. I always like to make sure right now. So here we go. Cycle start. See the probe is moving down. And now it lands on our Z. And it automatically zeroes out the Z. As you see there, we don't have to zero it. It's already zeroed it tells us the part position, uh, well, the part position is zero, tool number 40 is zero. Now we're all good, X, Y, Z, zero, 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 in G54. Now we gotta go over and do the same for G56. So I get out of here, I go to my MDI, I wanna get into, sorry, not G56, I'm in G55. Type in G55, cycle start to continue. Now I am in G55 and we will jog the probe over to the right of the uh, second workpiece. All right, so now that we've got the probe beside the second workpiece, we go set up to the part. We're in G55. And we're going to want to probe a boss again here. And this time, instead of four and a half, we'll do five. See if we can't avoid that, uh, the, the Z coming down too early. Clearance amount, uh, 0 0.5. That's the Z. And let's start it. And you're about to see here that uh, the probe still touches early in both X and Y. Um, I think this has something to do with its, you know, it travels that boss size from the initial position. But again, still working it out here. All right, so back in the control, we see that the center of boss is at X 
y minus 1.9783. We see that lines up with the readings we have on our DRO. Uh, diameter 3.9962, so that all checks out again. And uh, so we're gonna zero out our x, set, go to the next axis, y, set, you got x, y, zero, g, 55, and now the only thing left to do is our z. Again, we go to next axis, my probe is tool number 40, and then we go auto to detect the uh, z position. Press cycle start, make sure the probe is working, we've done that, and we cycle start again. Probing cycle finished, we have XYZ000, and we can go ahead and start cutting the part. All right, so we're gonna go over to SolidWorks or the HSM Works plugin in SolidWorks. This is our tool path. We're doing 3000 RPM with a three inch, or sorry, three quarter inch single flute indexable cutter, the AV Tool Shear Hog. I'm only taking 50 thou depths because you saw the way this piece is held in the vise. We're gonna take it easy for uh, while we're milling in the flats here. And um, so let's go ahead and post this job. We'll call it number three. Just quickly save it on the desktop. And then I do actually use uh, the same computer for cam work as I do to run the control. I know it's not really advised, but you know, it's never bitten me before. And so uh, it's really kind of super convenient not having to jump back and forth with SD cards. Uh, maybe one thing worth mentioning is that um, in HSM works, when you post the job, it opens automatically in this Autodesk HSM editor, lets you take a look at the G code. I don't spend too much time in this window, but you know, if you want to take a closer look, you can always do that. So let's go over to the control. Let's load the job. Let's go to job number three. And uh, let's hit start. This will just bring it to the home position. And our first indication that we have multiple work coordinate offsets is that we have sort of two sets of these tool paths. This is the G55, or sorry, G54 and G56. Um, says to insert T13, shear hog three quarter inch, which we've done. I'll go manually turn on my spindle. I don't have CNC control of my spindle. I'll turn on the air as well. And then, um, at the start of every program, I like to have the pendant set on the uh, feeds knob and I will kind of manually, you can see there the feed rate override right here. Uh, I'm holding the pendant and I can crank it up and down as I like. So uh, as the job's starting, I'll always crank it down a little bit. So let's, uh, let's give it a go here. You saw there in the control, we're tracing the, the path and it is, you know, going from one to the next, just like we see on the machine. And here you can see the two pieces are now flipped over. They were being held in the vices on the flats we just machined in. And I'll end the video here to keep it short, but we'll likely make a video of the rest of the machining. Uh, when I do that, you will see a link in the, in the description here if you're interested. Thanks for watching. See you later, guys.